okay today is carburetor rebuild time on the stang so we're going to take off this one barrel carb and try to rebuild it this will be my first attempt at ever rebuilding a carburetor but luckily this is the i guess is the simplest one they don't get much simpler than this being a single barrel on here so what are we going to have to do um to make this happen well let's get into it and take a look okay to get this thing off from what i can tell we've got two bolts holding it on we've got one right down there you can see and if we come in on this side right up under there you've got one back there then we've also got to undo the throttle linkages that connect into here and go back that way. See, so we got the two there, and we've got to undo the spring here. That's up here that hooks onto the. Let's see. There we go. Onto the manifold right here. Get that undone, and that should then. Oh yeah, and get this vacuum that goes to the PCV valve off. So and we've got the other vacuum right there that we can tap into. Okay. Anyway, that's a whole other thing. But we're going to go ahead and get this pulled off. I'm not going to record taking this off because it's pretty straightforward. Oh, yeah. And, of course, we've got to undo the fuel line there at the uh, fuel filter, which is that is this thing right there. That's the fuel filter. And then this is the fuel line that runs down to the fuel pump. So we're going to get this thing pulled off here. This is not the original carburetor. This is a Holley. Uh, I think it's a Holley 1940 model. Uh, which is what I hope because that's what I've got the rebuild kit for. So I looked at getting a new one, a new carburetor, and it's like 200 bucks for a new carburetor. I spent maybe 40, no, I guess it was 60 bucks because I got the deluxe rebuild kit, which included new floats and some other pieces that the standard one doesn't. So I uh, figured 60 bucks was a much better value than 200. Uh, so hopefully I can get this to to work. Um, I'm going to take a bunch of pictures too, so I know how all of this mounts back up. And that's watching a lot of the rebuild videos. They strongly encourage that. So anyway, uh, oh yeah. By the way, something else. If yours is hooked up, this is the choke tube. It's supposed to go down and connect into the manifold. Let's see if I can get in and can see where it's supposed to connect. I'm not really getting a good look down in there, but any, oh yeah, I think that anyway, there's a hole on the manifold, the exhaust manifold that's supposed to connect into. Uh, this one's not connected, so the choke's not really doing me any good at this point. I'll have to fix that some other time because I don't have that. But I'm planning to replace that exhaust manifold anyway. So with that, time to get started on taking this thing off. Okay, so we got the, the carburetor off, uh, and I can't really see what you're seeing exactly, but... Here's the carb. A um, couple of things I should have mentioned as I was taking it off was first remember it still got gas in it so be careful when you're pulling it off it um, yeah it can have a lot you know spill gas everywhere and you obviously want to be careful of that because that's a uh, hazard. So Anyway, it came off pretty easily. The biggest problem I had was getting the vacuum advance that goes to the distributor off. Uh, the fitting is supposed to rotate. Uh, it didn't want to do that, so I actually had to disconnect the carb, then spin the carb in to get it um, going in the, the right direction. So, anyway, we will see how this because I just realized this actually has a Motocraft stamp on it, so I hope I have the right rebuild kit for this. But I saw the stamp of Holly on the other side, and so there was the Motocraft 2100 uh, single barrel that was used. Um, 
Holly also produced a model of that, which may be what this is. I swear I thought I'd replaced this carburetor back um, in the 80s. And the replacement carb was usually the, the Holly 1940. So I may have made a mistake on this one. We will see. We will see how far we get. I may have to buy some new parts. Well, letting my dad know that it is off. Um, anyway, so one of the things I recommend, I've got the, the assuming I have the right car, but I'm going to go looking at this thing now to see if this is the right one. Um, but got the, the exploded view sheet and adjustment sheet that got from Mike's carburetor. So the, the rebuild kit came from him. Uh, he has a good reputation in the industry, so I'll have to get the fuel filter off there. Start looking, it looks like it's the same thing, so maybe, maybe it is. Anyway, we'll find out why, you know, live, dang uh, why don't <laughs> live dangerously, right? So one of the things I'm going to um, do as I'm taking this thing apart is there's a lot of little bitty pieces in this thing so I'm going to take a lot of pictures I'm going to try to segregate things out accordingly and I probably should be wearing gloves with this instead of getting pretty some crap all over my hands uh, but just wanted to let you know that the, uh, there's a lot of little screws and everything you want to make sure you put things back where they go uh, so have some little baggies or little things to to organize the screws and pieces that come out. If you have a big enough table, you can actually kind of put them as you take them out where they go, kind of thing. At least that's what I saw on the web. Like I said, this is the first carb I've ever rebuilt or attempted to rebuild, so take what I'm doing with a grain of salt. So, first thing is to go ahead and take a bunch of pictures now that I've got it out of the car. And we can go do that. While well, I check a text message from my dad. So it's my dad's the original owner of the car. He's very interested in the outcome of all this. So again, just taking a bunch of good close-up pictures of everything just to get an idea. One thing I'm seeing is I'm going over this, I'm seeing a bunch of turn this around. a bunch of what's it grease or maybe even gasoline was coming out of this which is definitely not not good at all so we want to get that obviously seal gasket is is not working out uh, well there so we're going to start taking this thing apart from the top uh, we'll be cleaning it as we go as i figure out how best to some of this so let's see first let's get the fuel filter off this over here I found the bigger wrench I didn't think that was going to be too hard to it pulled out more than I expected at the time, but that's okay. That's something that has to be replaced as well. Let's see that. So what I'm going to do is break these loose. Size. thought this would come looser easier because this is a new fuel filter Why is 
doesn't come apart. I think I had to tweak that you know, tight. Apparently I did torque the shit out of that thing. That's not a good bit. You should not have to torque it that much. Okay. The only reason I do that, I won't reuse that fuel filter because it's good. Otherwise, I'd replace it. So this is in your rebuild kit. Um, the jet that goes in. Uh, not really jet, the, I guess it's the valve that uh, allows fuel to enter the carburetor. Your kit should come with a new one of those, so I'm not going to worry about that. What I am going to do is get some. Okay, I've decided to get some gloves on. Um, so, let's see, we got that disconnected. Let's see what seems to be the next is going to be. Let's see if I can get this thing disconnected, which I'm not, it's a vacuum pump of some sort. So I we'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. Get this part off. The reason I'm going with this one first is because it connects to this linkage over here that is connected to the top and I don't see how I can easily get that off without disconnecting this first. So I'm taking that off first. Now as I'm doing this, a couple other things I'm thinking about that I probably should tell you. Um, one, remember you're working with snowhead gas in it, there's going to be fumes, so make sure you're working in a well-ventilated area. That's why I'm out here in the garage sweating my keister off instead of working inside where it's nice and air-conditioned because I'm here in Georgia and in the south it is quite hot right now. I'm trying to get this to, to pop loose. I'm not sure. There we go. Okay, so this is where I'm going to take a picture showing that there was a spring in here. And that it goes with this piece right here. So picture time. And that part uh, is, what part is that? Oh, it would be 24 is the diaphragm, 19 spring for the diaphragm, it's a vacuum something, I don't know. Said so I'm not a mechanic. So take this off and sit these over here together. I know those go together. Put this over there. So that gets this linkage here where it's loose. And I can maybe pull that out. There we go. So that goes with that. Okay, so that takes care of one of those. Now I've got this other linkage here, which is held on by this clip. So, 
picture time again. So take this, this, that comes. Okay, so now we only have one other connector, and that is this one here, which goes here. It's held on by a nut there. Now the question is, do I have the right size socket? Nope. I have a wrench that will fit it. So this is a 3 3 8 nut on here that's holding this bracket on here. Well, anyway, other things I was going to tell you. So some other things I got um, based on what I'd seen on other YouTube videos about rebuilding carburetors is obviously you're going to want to clean this sucker clean all the metal parts out um, as you're doing it. Pardon me, it's sweat in my eye. It's a fun part of working outside, 90 plus degree temperatures with a humidity of a lot. Okay, so that's... Spring hooks are there. Hooks around there. What else holds that? Maybe that shouldn't come off. Well, it would, but maybe not. Okay. Now, what I've gotten is a bunch of carb and choke cleaner here for spraying and cleaning off parts, which is why I have this other little drum. Or, not drum, I guess container. I'm going to fall off the ground so I don't get all the crap on it. Some people will put all of this in a bath. some of these nuts and stuff off. I'm just going to try to clean them with a little of the carb cleaner. Put them back together. They you can tell they've been cleaned. So I got the carb cleaner. I also got some um, scotch bright pads to help clean parts even more. So I'm going to get one of those right now.
Okay, so apparently we had a camera malfunction and we didn't get the rest of the disassembly. So here are some shots of the carburetor as we take it apart in the various components and pieces and their condition. You can see the gaskets were pretty shot, whatnot. Uh, then we let it all soak in some brake cleaner and then reassembled. So now we'll re return to the assembly or the final product. Okay, so we got the carb finally rebuilt. Got her all put back together with our rebuild kit. Got her cleaned back up so she looks much better, not covered in grease and grime like she was before. So a couple of lessons learned on this. Make sure you take lots of pictures. I didn't take nearly enough pictures. Because trying to figure out where all these little connecting rods or linkages go a pain especially because this one and this one let me see if you can get in here this one right here are shaped very <clears throat> are shaped very similar to one another so <clears throat> um, I was initially trying to put the wrong one in the wrong spot um, so you want to make sure you you note where all of those things go but I got it all in here and hopefully back together the right way. At least according to the pictures, it's the right way. So we'll double check everything there to make sure. But she's good. We're going to be putting her back on the car. I'm also going to be replacing the fuel pump, which... Get the light source down here so you can see that. So right there is the, the fuel pump. So I'm going to try to get it out. I've got a new one of those. Although that one seems to be working. I figure I might as well replace it if I can because I see some buildup on that one. So we'll try to get it out. Um, but that carburetor is going to go, whoops, out of the way right there. See, I put a rag in there to keep stuff from getting in the engine while I was working on it. So we'll get her back in and get her going. Uh, one last thing I did want to mention if you ever do this yourself on here you'll see this screw let's see right there it's got the spring on it that's uh the mixture screw so when you put that in after you're rebuilding it um what i've read everywhere and seen is you take it screw it in as far as it'll go not over torquing it or anything just until it bottoms out um, and then back it out one and a half turns and that will get you a good st uh, starting point for your your fuel mixture so that uh, I'm gonna go put this back on okay so we got the car back in the car uh, it's back in a couple things also replaced the PCV valve back there need to get a clamp I'm uh, missing one couldn't find one. I thought I had an extra also replaced the vacuum hose that goes to the PCV valve because the one that was in here was ancient uh, something I'm gonna have to get because it didn't uh, it broke and reinstall is the clutch uh, not clutch um, oh crud um, choke choke tube that goes from here down to the exhaust manifold that uh, opens and closes the choke based on the temperature of the engine so um, that broke. I didn't think about getting a new one when I got the carb rebuilt kit. So I'll get one of those. Didn't matter because I didn't have the, the little, I don't know if you can see it down there. Let's see if I can get a, it's supposed to be a little nipple like thing sitting in the exhaust manifold right there that that choke tube feeds into that isn't there anyway. And I've got to replace the exhaust manifold because I've got crap like this where it's cracked, leaking really bad. And that's, I think, the original exhaust manifold from 67. So I've got to replace it as well. But none of that should stop from checking and making sure the carb works. It may not work perfectly because the fact the choke won't work. But um, everything else should be good to go, I hope. So anyway, we'll give it a shot here after I replace the fuel uh, pump. So that's next on my agenda. Okay, so changing fuel pump, probably not gonna happen because the hard line, which is right there, I cannot get that loose. I've sprayed it with PB Blaster and 
penetrating oil, so it's probably going to have to soak for a few days to get loose, so that's not happening. Uh, can't use heat on that because, well, it's fuel, right? So don't do that. Um, I did go up and change all the spark plugs, which thankfully on this engine is very easy. You can see them right there. One of the things I love about this inline six is it's all there. So change those out because I had the plugs that were 20 something years old, which you can see laid out here. And they actually weren't, let me get that to focus a little bit. Anyway, they weren't that bad. See a little rounded at the end, but overall pretty clean. You know, for plugs that have been there for 22 years, uh, no signs of a lot of fouling. Don't appear to be running like they were running super rich or anything. So they probably could have stayed in there. But that's I rebuilt the carb to get the most out of the carb rebuild, assuming it works. Um, we're okay. So since I'm not doing the fuel pump, I guess now is the faithful moment. Time to see if we can get her to start. So carburetor installed, car is running, had to chase down some leaks around the fuel filter, tighten that up, we got that squared away and she seems to be running pretty darn good. So I guess I can now claim I rebuilt my first carburetor successfully. Yay! Very excited. Okay, now if the plugs change, still got to do the fuel pump at some point. I'd like to get a professional that does hit a set timing and all that to look at it. Get the choke thing fixed. I'll probably wait till I get the manifold replaced to do that. But I guess we'll go wash her now. Get her cleaned up. I've already started on the air cleaner. But we'll get that put back home. Back her out. I've got to back the truck out first. And get her washed get all the grease from the last several weekends of work off of it. Okay, going for a test drive in the Mustang after carb rebuild. out of the garage here which is always somewhat entertaining with non-power steering trying to get around my wife's Mustang she's backing up pretty good and here we go Gotta figure out what happened to the radio. The radio quit working yesterday or Friday. And I'm sure you can get wind noise because I'm doing the old two, 255 air conditioning because, well, that's what it's got go see how she does so far so good nothing seems to be untoldly wrong Doing pretty darn good. power drum brakes. I don't stop nearly as fast as everybody else. Oh, this is going to be a tight fit. 
bit through pretty good. There we go. I'll go out and get her on the road where I can get her up to speed. See how she does. Steering is so much better since we did the rebuild on the front end. Definitely tell the difference. It's still got play in it. Still think the steering box probably needs to be either rebuilt or replaced. I'm toying with going with uh, Borgeson Power Assist steering on that, but we'll see. We got other things we need to figure out first. Still have to figure out the transmission leak. Still got the floor pan that I've got the piece for, but I got to cut out the old one and get the new one welded in, and that's right now beyond my skill set. Not to mention I don't have the tools for it. Let's see, we're up to 50 miles an hour ish. Since it's a 45, I mean I'm more than 45. 50, right? Yes. Accelerating fine. No hesitation so far. Temperature is good right now, but I still think the timing needs to be set as part of it. I still want to replace that radiator. differential fluid. I haven't done that. gas station that has the non-ethanol fuel that I get in the car. I got it from CJ Pony Parts. They don't provide any instructions on how to target the mirror angle it, whatever. 
call it. Right now I look in it and all I see is trees. And grass and curve. No other. Big contrast day, nice summer day, and probably lower 90s. I was thinking back when I was in the Navy, had a weekend liberty. I was going to drive the car, drive from Norfolk, Virginia, all the way down to Atlanta, Georgia to see my now wife. We had just had a big snowfall, 12, 15 inches of snow, which I know up north that's nothing, but down south that's a lot. Went out to the parking lot where the car was. It was this car. Hot snow piled up around it. So got in, got the car cranked. Well, first I couldn't get in the driver's door. It was frozen shut. Got in the passenger door, crawled over, got the car cranked to get it heated up while I shoveled the snow out from around it. Couldn't even get the passenger door to stay shut. So I tied it off with jumper cables. From the door handle to the shifter, keep the door shut, and started down the road. And I think it was Highway 58, State Highway 58, if I remember correctly. Anyway, um, people were flying by me because I was going slow. Because I'm a Georgia boy, I don't drive in snow. So I was going, I don't know, 15, 20 miles an hour, nothing major. People were flying by me, and invariably, I'd get a couple miles down the road, and they'd be spun out in the median or in the ditch, and me just poking along, kept on going. I guess after about an hour or so of driving, not too far before I got to Highway 95 or Interstate 95, and uh, the car, the, the passenger door, thawed enough that it would actually close without being tied shut. But made it all the way home took about 16 hours <laughs> to get to get from Norfolk to Atlanta normally an eight-hour drive but I made it safely in this very car so, kind of I also drove it back in a hurricane again from Atlanta up to Norfolk didn't know there was Hugo or one of the one that hits Charleston I'm going up 95 and I'm just driving this torrential rain, literally get blown at one point all the way across the interstate into the median. That's the point I decided I probably need to pull over and wait for a bit. So I did. I got off the next exit, got up under a, an abandoned gas station uh, overhead. Uh, parked there for an hour or two, let the rain subside a little bit. Got back on the road. Me and this car have been through a lot. It gets me where I'm going safely though. Can't ask a car to do more than that. Well now we're here back at the house. Made a nice good test drive. Everything seems to be working like it should. Very happy. So now the good girl has earned herself a bath. So I'll pull it up here and park her. And there we go. Test drive successful.